with, in contact with them. But Max suggested that they start different colonies for different things, which they did, and to start a colony of telepathic humans. This is what changed everything. There are some humans that have the ability to have uh, telepathic communication with the aliens. And they learned from that how to actually communicate with earthlings and how and why we do some of the things that we do. And they found out that we're a very, very diverse cultures, many, many cultures, they've discovered that their diversity isn't that bad because they have telepathy, so they all start thinking pretty much the same way when it's all agreed upon. You know what I mean? If you have telepathy and you can know somebody's intent and know somebody's conversation and, and what they believe in everything, things become closer together. They start, you know, the belief systems are closer, the, the social systems are closer. It just makes sense that their belief, everything will be a little bit more the same. Not bad. I mean, there's still differences in things like that. However, they are becoming, they become more the same over centuries, of course, because, you know, you, uh, you eliminate the bad things and you get closer together. So when they found out how diverse we were, I mean, every single person, there's not two people that actually think alike. I mean, you may have some similarities in your thought patterns, but when they actually started studying the thought patterns of humans, they're going, oh my. This one thinks this way, this one thinks this way, this is the base for that thought, this is the base for that thought in another person, and they don't jive, but they came up with the same answer. And when they started realizing how diverse we were in our individuality, um, that is when they started understanding humanity. Because they did not understand how diverse we were. They didn't understand how one person could say the same thing as 14 other people and have 14 different meanings. So, um, but that is why they're becoming more successful with communication now is because the thought patterns are being understood by those that are in the uh, telepathic colony, which is colony one. And they're, they're learning from the telepaths how to communicate with Earth. And they're now understanding it's not that easy. But yet, the, the telepaths that are in Colony One are becoming more like aliens in the sense that their thought patterns are similar now because they agree. When you start agreeing as a community, then you start becoming more alike as a community. So that is a community that is becoming more alike the aliens, not in a bad way, because they're very friendly and they want to help. So if you can understand why now that the human colonies that Max proposed with the telepathic people has actually been the breakthrough for communication with Earth in a greater way than it ever has before. So now they have three colonies um, with diversely different thoughts. The third colony is an important one because that is where they're developing communication with Earth in the sense of videotapes, that kind of communication, YouTube kind of things, that they want to be able to communicate with Earth in the social media without causing excitement and craziness and all that stuff. So they figured the best way to start would be to start sending some um, videos that they made to our culture. So that is what Colony 3 is doing. They're, they have different individuals. They have filmmakers from the, from the Earth who go there. They won't say who. But they have also aliens that are interested in doing that as well. And they're coming together and they're recording hours and hours and hours a day 
but they want to make sure that it's usable material. So they give a little glimpse of it here and there to see how what the reactions are of Earth. I'm sure they've already started. But um, soon they will come out with something longer. And it won't be able to be doubted by the government that it is actually real. Now, a lot of people will, who cannot test it or check it will not know if it's real or not. But they want the government to know that it's real. And uh, many people that already know about this will believe that it's real because um, of what the information is. Because they'll know the information already. It'll be reiterated to those people that already know. So it's going to be interesting to see what that colony has actually produced at this point. So, yes. The colonies, some are in spaceships, and one is on another uh, planet, era, and um, I don't, we don't know exactly where that planet is, except it's in the Pleiadian system. Era so. is, uh, on the, Taget is one of the Pleiadian stars, and Era is a planet around Taget. Yes. I, th I had thought that some of the governments knew that there were aliens. They're, they do. Covering it up. I mean, they do. Because they're afraid of, you know, people going, flipping out. Well, we want to see, they want to see what the government does with these videos because if they block them or if they're going to let them go or what they're going to do because the information is going to be important to humanity. Uh, now, the governments fear the aliens because they know that they can control them at any time, but they don't, you see. There's a lot of aliens up there and none of them are controlling our government I mean, except for some reptilians or in Russia and some places like that, uh, brainwashing people. But um, the thing is, they're not really controlling the governments of the world. They're letting the governments still control themselves. But the governments know they're there because they're, uh, the weather is being monitored by aliens because we're going through a very severe time in weather. You may not realize it, but if they would not be helping with the weather, the weather would be three times as bad as it is. They calm it down that much. And even still with that, it's still harsh at times. Have they prevented some wars too? I mean, I'm wondering how, are they trying to keep us from annihilating each other? Yes, they're trying to keep, well, this is the closest that any Earth civilization has been to, to uh, becoming part of the galaxy. I mean, as far as communicating and things of that nature. They have a real... They have a real um, good sense about it now. And we're entering a period of evolution for our species that will come within the next couple hundred years where a lot of people will become telepathic. Excuse me? I was just wondering, are you choosing to call them aliens? Yes. Or, okay, that's just the term you're choosing to... Yeah, because... Short, if, sure. You can use any term for them. Right. They're still people. Okay. But I call them aliens because so you'll know that I'm not talking about my next door neighbor or something. Okay. So. Not of this planet. Yeah, not of this world. Out oh, of this right. world, right. yeah. And you want to be more polite? They don't mind being ta called aliens. Okay. Um, I talk to them about that. In fact, they call each other aliens sometimes. The aliens over here, the species over there. It's all relative. To it's all relative, yes. Um, they call each other species a lot. I should call them species so, as well, yeah. I was watching um, a news program the other day, and there's this Japanese scientist, brilliant, brilliant man. Mm -hmm. I forgot what his name is now, but he was saying that we already have the technology to do telepathic thinking. Yes, we do. Um, we, can, we, we can do it through machinery at this time. Uh, this is something, I don't know if anybody knows about how telepathy starts. It starts with, you know, the energy chakras in your body. It starts with the center, the heart. It's three chakras down and three chakras up. It's the center of your being. So, and it starts there with the, the ability to be able to sense person's intentions. The ability to be able to walk near somebody and say, oh, that, that person's well-intentioned or that person is not well-intentioned. 
That is why so we. I mean, I'm not. So yeah. that is why we are at the beginning of that evolution of telepathy, because we are able. Most of us are able to do that. It's just trying to realize what's legal and, and what isn't. You go back thirty years or forty years. No one was able to do that, mm -hmm. uh, or very few. Very few people could walk up to and, and know anything about anybody else, and that's why there was so much prejudice. Prejudice, and it's it's still there, but I pray that it gets less and less and less, like it should. So, because we're all alike, we all have the same chakras, we all have the same internal parts, we all have the same intention-based life. So, and love, and we, we love, we care, we, you know, we're all the same. Not one of us is alien at this point. So, <laughs> but, um, yes, and so that's what I'm saying. God bless you, yes. This is the beginning of a new era for the world. It is. Because you all now can walk into a room and, and usually tell if somebody's good intentioned or bad intention, and you won't even have to look at their face. You don't have to look at their face. And sometimes the face is deceiving. Sometimes the face is deceiving. But that is where I'm saying telepathy is coming to us. And it's going to take a couple hundred, 150, 200 years. But this, on 2012, that date, December 21st, 2012, was the beginning of what they called an ascension. Ascension of uh, our vibration as a human, as a co community of people. It started then. It starts very, very small. Very small. And it's like a, a light. You know how you flash a light? And the light comes from here, but it comes out like that. Okay? That's how it's going to work. It's going to gather people. You see, it starts as very small, but... As it goes out, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And that's when it takes the people in. That light will bring it in. So, and a lot of you may have experienced that, where you won't even have to mention something to someone, and they'll already feel your vibration and say, so, how comes you're in such a good mood today? Or, how comes you're a little different today? Right? If you experience that, that is your vibration going out. And that is what they call enlightenment, is when your vibration can go out. You know what I mean? That's part of enlightenment. Because what it is, is we're spirits born into earthly bodies. And when we bring that spirit out to the edge of our bodies, that's peace. You, were, you, you have brought, brought yourself peace. Because your whole inside is filled with light. Now, when that is going out, out of your body to other people, that's enlightenment. When that's going out and people are seeing it, people are feeling it, that's enlightenment because you are enlightening others. So when you feel that peace, once you get it out to the edge of your body and feel that peace of love and understanding and goodness, then you can bring it out of your body when you start giving that away, when you start giving that peace away, then that's enlightenment. Think about that. And th those who can find joy, I think Buddha said, when you find joy, you are enlightened. Because joy comes out. Joy never stays in. You can't be joyful like this. It cannot. Joy comes out. Out, out, out. And, it, and it's contagious, and it's good, and it's loving. And joy is just part of that, is part of the enlightenment. When you find your joy, your highest excitement in your world, and when you find that, and it starts coming out of you, enlightenment. Keep it. Keep it. Keep it. Because we're all a net, of a vibrational net of light. And when that joy comes out, we knit ourselves together as a community. Because when you're in joy, there's no way you're going to come up and start a fight with somebody. Right? You're not going to come out, you're not going to be, I feel so good. What are you doing? You know? 
Um, it's just not going to happen. I mean, you'll have to be, there'll have to be something that, else, you know, because even when you're feeling the joy and you see something terrible, you go, oh boy, I wish, I want to help. I want to bring that up. I want to move that up. Let's move them out of that because I don't want them to feel that. I know what that's like. I don't want that. You don't want that. When you have joy, you want to bring people to your level. You don't want to go down to theirs. You don't want to dive down into sadness if you're having joy. <laughs> so what it is, is you you're, it just automatically, you want to bring people up. So that's, that's how I see enlightenment. And then you net yourself together, and that's going to be part of the community of the world, is the net of light that goes around it. So, I think that as we grow, and, and if you're in a community with a lot of people that are netted together as light, they bring you up if you're down. And you bring them up if they're down. So it's a community effort for joy and for enlightenment. So I would love to see that. But I don't know if I'll see that in my lifetime. But I can see that it can happen. I can see that that can happen. Don't you see that now? I see that now with people netting themselves, but I want to see the whole world. No. <laughs> the, seeds have been the seeds have definitely been planted and are growing. Mm -hmm. There's no question that they're growing. Yes? What's the population of these three colonies? How many airplanes and how many... Um, it changes all the time, but I think there's over 100 uh, uh, telepaths right now. Oh, wait, but wait, 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 wait. 100 in 180 the... 180 people visiting the colonies. Mm -hmm. uh, telepaths is under 20. Well, they were under 20 before, but they brought a lot of people in. And... Um, oh, I mean... But they're not all telepaths. Over 100 people in a telepathic colony. Yes, but, but they're not all telepaths. Yes. Yeah. All right. <laughs> not yet. So, um, but they're, they're not there all the time at once. Mm -hmm. There's 120 different people going there and coming back. So, and at this point, it's, some people don't remember, and other people do, so we're working on, they're working on that, they, they would like people to remember being there, some people do remember, but a lot of times people don't, yes? Yeah, Jim, you reference um, a few different type of alien species. Yes. And different colonies. Yes. What I'm interested in knowing is three things. Yes. <clears throat> what are the names of those species? There's 52 different ones. Why 52? Well, we, no, that you're channeling. Oh, that I'm channeling? Oh, that's, okay. That I'm channeling, I... Well, let me ask you, let me answer all, I'll ask all the questions. Okay. So, what are the species? Where are they inhabiting presently? And what ultimately is their goal in the intercourse and communion with humanity on the planet Earth? Okay. Uh, let's see. The first question is, what are the species? They're uh, greys, or yu-yil. Everybody know what yu-yil is? They're a gray, short gray. I, I know the names of them. I, I don't know if I can describe them all, but I can tell you what the species are. Yeah, yu-yils are uh, most common, very uh, High energy, big head, sort of like a heart. Looks a little like E.T., not quite. Not quite that alien, but um, Pleiadians, who are very tall. And they're short Pleiadians as well. They're, and both uh, the tall and the uh, short are both either silver-skinned or blue-skinned or green-tinted skinned. But uh, the, tall, the tall Pleiadians look similar to humans. In, in their features and things. Bigger eyes, but uh, still they can look very human. But they're very big. Some people call them the Nords because they're very, they, they have, they're tall and blonde haired and they very muscular and very beautiful. So, and then there's the blues, blue Pleiadians, which um, are short and round and sort of blobby looking. And uh, then there's Lyrans, which are cat-like. Uh, much, they, I mean, they, they don't have all the features of a cat. They don't have cat ears or anything like that. But they have the cat nose. And they don't have the cat eyes, but they do have the fur. 
down that comes down through here, and they're about eight. Uh, Takur, the one I talked to, uh, has the lowest voice, and it's a woman. Takur is a woman, and she has a, the lowest voice of all the aliens that I channel, and she's eight foot seven, um, and her mate is nine foot. So. What else? There's the Syrians, and I talked to Santia, mm -hmm. who is a very soft, angelic kind of being. I'm not sure what she looks like, but I know she's very, it's a very, very gentle kind of spirit. It's a very, uh, I mean, it's, it's so light. It's a very light feeling when she comes in. And let's see, uh, who else? Octorians, yes. Octorians are very advanced. They're, um, we go by third, we're the third density. We're in third dimension, correct? There's, I go third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Some people do it 33, five, seven, nine. Um, it's more understandable for me to go, when you go up a dimension, just to go to four. <laughs> and then we five. Just use the numbers they give yes, us. Yes, they use the numbers they gave us. And other channelers have different numbers, but this is the number system we use. So they're closer to fifth dimension than anybody else that I, that I uh, channel, except for angels who are in seventh dimension. Oh. The, uh, angels are outside of dimension. Oh, okay. You Some dimensions know, are discordant human species. They're in realms. They have nine realms. Okay. Right. Okay. Thank you for correcting. Uh, angels are in nine different realms. So, um, and they're outside of spirituality. <laughs> and I, I've only ever channeled one angel, and his name was Gahil, and he's from the third realm. <coughs> third realm, Gahil. And let's see... Um, who else? Reptilians. Oh, reptilians, but I don't know where they are. Reptilians are all over the place. And then some of them are on Earth, and some of them are on ships. And I do not think that any reptilian uh, channels through me from a, uh, from a planet. They come from spaceships or on Earth. So. Do they have bad intentions? So like some, of the, some of the reptilians do. Uh, the thing about reptilians is this, they're, they're a different thought pattern than, than um, humanoids. Their thought pattern is that strength is strength, integrity, no weakness, no weakness at all. If, you're, if they think you're weak, they won't talk to you. If they think you're weak, they'll just say, eh, you know, they'll leave you alone. But uh, their big thing, the good ones, I don't talk to the bad ones because I have a... Uh, I think about that. I don't bring any, anything negative into me. If it's negative, I won't bring it in. If I can sense that it's negative or that it has bad intent, no come in. Nope. You can stop it then. Yes, I can stop it. I have, um, since the early times I started channeling, I have a protector from the Yuyil Society. And they said, this person, his name is Fission, will help you to uh, weed out what spirits come to you. So, the second thing, where are they from? Okay, um, right now, Dee's Do, who is a Yigil, uh, Takur, who's a Lyran, and Tepe, who is a Pleiadian, are on a ship around um, the North American continent. So, and um, Lakesh, who is a blue, is from his planet. The, the blues are very neutral. He's a very fun-loving character, but their society is neutral. They don't want visitors right now, and they don't want to visit anyone right now, except through channeling. And the reason for this is they've come to a place in their society where they're very satisfied with this. Not that they will never, ever have anybody come to them again, but right now they're deciding why they're, why everything is so good there. They're trying to figure that out. So that I want, they want to study it as it is. They don't want people coming and messing that up. So they go, no offense, but, but we want to figure this out right now so that we can keep it cool. So we know that change is inevitable. That is one of the laws of the universe. Change will come. No matter who you are, you can't stay the same. You will not stay the same. You may seem the same, but you're not.
<laughs> it's, there is changes, always, always, always. So, but they want to try to keep change to a bare minimum right now. And of course, there's changes going on there, but they want, they're studying themselves. So, um, as a society. So, that's pretty interesting. Uh, Syrian, uh, Centiri, oh, Centia, I'm sorry, yes. is from Sirius. Um, Sirius is a very highly evolved place. The beings there are, I sense that they're very angelic. I have no idea what they look like. Um, but they're very gentle. They're very spiritual. They have general knowledge, which what I mean by that is they don't say anything too extremely serious. They're very calm. And they believe that um, what they say should be understood in a very universal kind of way. So they're very general about what they say, but it's very universal. So, and then, um, uh, what, are the, what, are the, what was the one? Octorians. Octorians, the ones that are like fifth dimensional almost, they have a great language. I love it very much because they start with the intent at the beginning, the middle, or the end of the sentence. Every sentence they say, or every paragraph they say, if the paragraph is with the same intent, they don't have to say the intent again, but they may say, for the good of, for the good of your body, and then they will say the sentence, or the paragraph, or for the mystery of your mind, and they will say that they have an intention for every sentence that they say, so that you will not, they will not be misunderstood in any way, shape, or form. So they actually give that intent, at the, most of them do it at, right at the beginning of the sentence, and say, um, and actually, they have it also in their names. When you ask them what their name is, the mystery of birth is the first part of everyone's name, or the miracle of birth, I think it is. And then the name that was given to me of the person I channeled with the Arcturian was Miracle of Burke, Birth, Ark of the Sky, Center of the Eye. That was the, her name. And I thought that, wow, that's a very strange name. But you think about it, it's like, wow, very significant. If you, if you would, you start with an intention for your name, Miracle of Birth, you know. I'm a miracle of birth. We're all a miracle of birth, right? And, but to remind everybody of that, even if you take it for granted, it's still going to, it's still hitting your head. Miracle of birth. So you're a special person. You're a miracle. Every person is a miracle of birth. And that's the intention for the beginning of their name. Is that wonderful? I think it's amazing. So, uh, and that's about it. Because we are closer to, um, we are closer to becoming part of a, a citizen of the galaxy than we ever been before. I don't know how many people know that every so many hundred thousand years the Earth flips over. Correct. It destroys most civilizations. It destroys a civilization, and there's a few left, and what are they left with is like, ugh, you know. Um, they're not ready to, to build an earth or anything, and many, and many civilizations completely are gone from the earth. The Atlanteans, the, you know, the Minoans, and the, you know, uh, many, many advanced civilizations, the ancient Greek, uh, Egyptians, the ancient Greeks. Um, Civilizations that are gone, that could have actually evolved to this level, are gone before their time for some reason or another. And they see that in uniformity right now, we're closer to joining the universe, the galaxy, and becoming part of it as part of you know their friendship, their citizenship, than we ever have before. And that's why they want to preserve us. Um, they tried once before, it did not work. But this time, according to Bashar, and whoever knows Bashar, this timeline shall not pass away. And so, but what the, uh, 
what the uh, uh, Grook Ficknerians say, and that's the alliance that they have with the five different species. There's five species in an alliance. What they say is, yes, the uh, they the Sasani, uh, so Chikani now, the Chikani, which is a race of individuals which I've only ever uh, channeled once or twice, twice. Uh, has stated that this timeline will not pass away. That's it. But they don't mention that they're getting help from uh, 25 different species. So <laughs> all they say is, hey, we're just letting you know you're not going to pass away. But they go, I wish they would mention that we're helping. <laughs> so, but they don't always mention that. So. There are wars on some planets, and there are wars between reptilians and some species. Not as much as there was before, but there is still dissension in the universe. I mean, that's never going to stop. I think as long as there's a disagreement of some sort, there's going to be uh, some wars and fighting and things of that. And we, especially because reptilians look are strong, and if you if you uh, come up against them. Uh, they will hold their ground no matter what. Even if they're wrong, they're going to hold their ground. So I, I think that's why reptilians are in a lot of fights right now. So And insectoids as well. They're very similar. So. What do they think about that uh, we only use one-tenth of our brain? Um, they see that as a plus, actually, if it, because um, they think of us as a five-year-old with a gun. Um, do you know what I mean? Um, we have so many ways to destroy ourselves, and they're always pulling, a, pulling the plug on something, you know, just so we'll, we'll survive because there's some loony tune out there with, with it, like, a lot of power and, like, drunk with it and just wanting to use it and say, they'll remember me forever because I did this. Good, bad, or indifferent, you know, they don't care. But, um, so they're pulling plugs all the time on some things. Now, only when it's necessary. They don't get involved if it's not necessary. But yes, they do think of us as a childish race. However, with the, with the fact that our telepathy is going so well with them, they have hope for us. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> yes. So, what are people abducted, humans abducted, that they did experiments on? That was a while back. Um, they don't do that anymore. The reason why they don't do that anymore is they, re you see, that was during the period where they did not understand humanity and they thought it was just, um, when they thought we had intelligence, but they thought that it wasn't worth, it, it really was like a cow or a sheep or something like that, like we would think of, a, of an animal and, you know, we, Earth still slaughters their cows and sheep and everything else. So they dissected us just like a cow or a pig or whatever because oh, they couldn't understand. You're overstating. Well, yeah, I'm a little overstating, but it's similar. But uh, the thing is, they don't do that anymore. They don't do that anymore at all. They've uh, they asked permission for to be for people to have a, to go with them, and they don't do any kind of experiments like that. Yes. What, what do you think about the concepts that we hear if you watch Hangar 51 or Unsealed Files or Ancient Aliens, that our government is in collusion with probably the Syrian species who is purported to have been the original DNA splicers yeah. to the planet Earth's humanoids that created us, the aliens. And the well, planet. you can actually find online... Uh, reports to the government from SETI and different organizations where they do report that, oh yes, we have four alien bodies and yes, there's a, there's a, um, a ship in the solar system that's 26 miles long and it's out, they give where the, I mean, it's very matter of fact. They just sit there and go, and what about this? And they'll give the, read their information about it. It's just a hearing for, they have to give their congressional, you have to report to Congress every year, and it's, uh, it's all taped, but a lot of people look at that and are going, what is this, part of a movie or something? It's too boring to be a movie, for one thing. I mean, they're just sitting there stating facts, like, oh yeah, we have 
Uh, at Area 51, there's three bodies. At Area 47, under the, the there's this many bodies. And yes, they're they're in captivity. And yes, we redesigned something here or there, whatever. It's very very boring. It sounds very boring. <laughs> Using our DNA yes, they reproductive Yeah, they actually asked. They got so smart. Mm -hmm. they yeah, some of them, and actually, uh, they asked permission to take DNA, and people are all actually very willing to give it, and to be hybrid. A lot of people that are on human <laughs> colony have asked to be hybrided. Um, and then they, they, whenever you become a hybrid, they put a monitor in you, right behind the right ear usually, or behind the right knee. And it would be, that monitors your uh, blood, your electricity, your nervous system, your health, blah, blah, blah. And also, if there's anything in you that seems alien, that's not quite human, that's monitored also, and they want to make sure that that is part of the alien DNA part that they're putting in. They want to check and see how compatible it is. Now, some people, it's not compatible, so they put in small amounts at a time. Because, I know with me, I asked for some reptilian. Not a good idea. Um, they got to 0.7% and I said, stop, <laughs> stop, because I was starting to get agitated and angry all the time. And I go, and that isn't what I want to be. No, that's the beginning of their, that's how they start. It starts off and because it's, it's, it's not quite like anything that we know of. So I stopped it at 0.7% and I will not start it again. <laughs> Did I answer all your questions? Not exactly, to be honest. Well, what, what part didn't? Well, I'm trying to figure out now, because I've never channeled aliens, but mm -hmm. I'm a real good channeler here on Earth. Oh, good. People. Good. But I'm trying to figure out what is the real reason and what is the intention. Now, if you're purporting to channel certain types, like have you read Drumbala Melchizedek? Yes. Mm -hmm. He claims we're the product of Syrian DNA mm -hmm. earthly humanoids. Mm hmm if you're channeling anyone from Sirius, what are they telling you? Yes, They're very... Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, Syrians, Pleiadians, Arcturians, our, our ancient ancestors, um, and, few, uh, and, and, uh, and Yael as well. Mm -hmm. And with, with Pleiadians and Yael, we exchange. They inject historically the DNA into us, and then they take some humans to them, so they also uh, take human DNA from Earth to, to their planet. So. And for what reason? That's my question. I understand what Melchizedek purports, why they brought the working drones here to Earth to mine the gold, but why are they taking now this new humanoid from the human the homo sapien slash alien uh, hybridization back to Sirius? All right. Uh, there are lots of different ways. Like in the past, uh, why uh, they came here, it was um, they just ran away from war, so they just made their colony and then they stay here and crossbreed with with our hominoids. It's one one of the reasons. And different races carry different alien DNA. So Japanese have more of some, mm -hmm. and whatever uh, Africans are most most close to original Earth uh, right. origin. Right. We're all, by the way, and, uh, this is Syrians, the theology is mm -hmm. that we're all 99.99% mitochondrial DNA from Southeast Africa. Correct. Yes. That's why it makes sense what Jumbo uh, Mokizadek reports. Yes. yes. Syrians are most pronounced in India, Iran, and areas around. So that's most Syrian image. That's what they said. So most of the Syrian DNA is present there. That's Syrian culture. Syria is named after Sirius. Mm -hmm. Ah. Ah. Oh, I, well, I thought that was more the Sumerians. The Sumeria. The Sumerians. Yes, yeah, Sumerians too. Yeah. yeah. So, um, why now? Um, there are two different flows. One is alien DNA here and another human DNA there. 
say we spoke to a planet, to a representative of the planet, a queen of the planet. They had slaves from Roman Empire, then Andro Andromeda, in Andromeda, the planet. And they took the slaves, human slaves from all Roman Empire, but in the history they liberated the slaves. So humans, Earth humans live now there, crossbreeding with their Pleiadians. In Andromeda there, there is a Pleiadian colony. So Pleiadians and Earth humans are crossbreeding to each other. They kind of free humans there. So that's one of the reasons. So uh, Zeta grays, the other one, the small grays, are the ones which can't really reproduce well. So they have genetic problems. They bring in human DNA to improve their genetics, but they're not injecting into their kind of... The, the, the Zeta grays create more species, like Sasani, Bashar Sasani, were created by crossing humans and Zeta grays. So Sasani, Bashar Sasani are the product of that. So Yael also the product of uh, gray DNA mixed with human DNA. So they, they uh, appreciate our emotions and vitality and a few other things. So they bring the DNA there. They create hybrids uh, in part to help the dialogue. It's really hard to dialogue with the aliens, but with the hybrids it's much easier. Hybrids are have part of human mind and part of alien mind, so and they they are understand both cultures better. What do you think is the relationship of ongoing uh, U.S. or earthly political structures with this intercourse? What's the agreement, or aren't, isn't this discussed? Well, it is. There, when they discuss first contact, that's when it's. That's when that becomes important because they don't want to be threatening to the uh, to the world. They don't want to be seen as uh, coming to hurt anybody. But yet, their very appearance for first contact is going to be a threat. Um, and so that is why they are so cautious about it. And they they deliberate. And on infinitum on, on how to do it because every two days it changes how they want to do it and so they're not going to come though until we're ready until enough people are ready to accept it uh, and that's why they're going to use the internet and YouTube and things to prepare people ahead of time and also people like yourselves who understand and know that there are aliens out there that you, uh, to help others to calm down you know, and it's not weird anymore. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you're not weird if you talk about an alien, so. Uh, but some people still feel that way. It's like, oh, you can't talk about aliens. That's just weird, you know. But, you know, you got to start talking about it because it's there, and there's proof that it's there. And so, <coughs> and their intent, of, as, from what I feel when they come through me, is their intent is to educate who is ever here, how to grow their vibration and be a higher vibrational person so that they can either lift up the world or, you know, lift up each other. And, and they're actually very spiritual. The ones that, that channel are selected because they're more spiritual, I think. I think that that is part of the reason why they are able to channel, why they were selected to channel, is because they're able to bring their spirituality into the present reality and make it understandable. And um, I feel very, you know, after channeling with many aliens, a few of them left me sort of slimy, but most of them leave me very energetic. So. Most of them. Some reptilians can leave you sort of feeling like you need a shower for like 10 weeks. But, but most of the time they're very good and gentle and loving. Very, very angelic. Is it usually the same ones who come through you? Or yeah, I have... Um, varied or how every now and then a new one will come through. But I do have my regulars that come by. So, like Lakesh from um, his planet. He's a, uh, one of the shorter, bulbous-looking blues. He's very popular. And Takur the Lyran, she's very, very uh, loving to humans. And uh, Tim, Pen Tim, who is a Yigil. And 
Centiri. Centira. Centini. I can't. Centia. I have a question. Yes. Like, when you, like, when one of the um, uh, aliens is talking, are you, are you able to communicate with any of the other aliens? Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, and in fact, they try to distract me so I don't interfere the conversation. So, because you know, they push me aside a little bit, so I can still hear a little bit what's going on. However, they try to distract me with something else, so I don't become part of the conversation. Right. Because if I become part of the conversation, then yeah, they might as well go away. Right. But <laughs> but they but they are able to like if if we asked a question about a different r uh, race, mm -hmm. they would be able to talk to that different race. Um, sometimes at that time, sometimes not. Okay. It depends on availability, who's around, what's going on. Got so, it. and um, what was I going to say? Um, there is a policy they typically don't talk about other races. They say ask yeah. them. They do. Do not. It is a. They do have a lot of protocol between the races. So you have to follow the the race the species protocol so that you don't. Um, hurt anybody or right, offend right. anybody right, right. or so they're all very polite and they ask usually if the, and they we will tell you I can't answer that because the protocol is right. whatever so got it yeah so yeah. when you're channeling are we allowed to ask questions of yes the Do they? Okay. yes you can ask any question you want that doesn't mean they'll answer right yes <laughs> no but there there can be dialogue yes. oh yeah yeah yes 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 Yes, did you have a question back there? Oh, I thought your hand was up. Uh, ju just to finish answering your question, uh, so why do they bring their DNA here yeah. to help our ascension? Okay. Uh, Zeta Grays bring their DNA here to take over the world, and all others, <laughs> the good ones, uh, the positive Grays and the others, bring their DNA to help our ascension, especially the relati relative species, the ones which are our descendants, they are permitted to communicate with us more and bring more of their DNA, especially if it's positive for us, especially if it brings telepathic abilities. Most of them, all of them have telepathic abilities. All, all of them are from higher dimension. So yeah. their DNA helps telepathic and psychic abilities. And they really want us to become telepathic because that way they can communicate with us better and understand us better. And... Um, that's really what they want. And because that they want to understand prevents us. deception among humans. It helps in understand In biological it. terms, uh, research biologists are, uh, are finding that in children, you know, using this, the concepts of these crystal children, the indigo children, children born after 1983 tend to have a much more active codon and exon activity. So we're not, as a human species, no. a default kind of genotype. And that jumped like 2,000% or something like that. It was a really, it's, they cannot explain why that happened. They cannot explain it. It jumped a huge percentage in perception for our children. And adults, I am, I currently channel with Indigo children. And I currently uh, channel with uh, parents of Indigo children. And parents that have children that are being taken and trained and schooled by aliens, and they know it. They've taken pictures of the uh, the globes around their head as they were sitting playing. There, the bubble bubbles appear around their head, and there's beings in those bubbles. So um, many times it's uh, spiritual beings. So. Um, because spiritual beings appear in bubbles in many pictures of spirits, if you ever notice that. So, um, I was in uh, New York City in uh -huh. 11 back in 2001, and I was right there at the North Tower. Uh -huh. And it was a very, very profound experience, to say the least. But that was the first time ever when I looked up in the sky to the west, or would have been the east because I'm facing south, of the North Tower. And I get kind of emotional because I used to work on the 84th floor of the North Tower. It, uh, there must have been 10,000 bubbles in the air of just little lights. I thought, 
Oh, my God, those are angels. Oh, spirits, that yeah. are trying to direct those evaporated souls that don't know the dead. Right. Do you know what I mean? The, the jet it, those are spirits. If you see little bubbles of light. Them, yes. Bubbles of light. It's beautiful. It's, and I have a friend that took a picture in a church. He was taking shutter, 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 shutter pictures. On the last picture of the shutter, the organ had started to play. 180 bubbles appeared around the organ. All through the air, different densities, different... But it was very apparent that they appeared at the sounding of the organ. So it was all those spirits that hadn't heard that organ played for all those years because it was being played for the first time in like 30 years or something and all these spirits arrived to hear it. So it's quite a profound picture. It's be really beautiful. So... Has your question been answered yet? Well, I guess so. I guess in my own heart and with my mind, yes. the way it is, yeah. I'm, I'm always trying to understand, in a sense, if we are products and combinations of the Sirius galaxy in that race, why don't we have a more active relationship with them individually? Mm -hmm. and why, if so, the powers that be like purportedly like President Eisenhower and then every administration mm -hmm. beyond that, why there's not this ongoing kind of more transparent relationship with other than just the mediums or the paranormal or the sensitives. It, see, this is where I'm hung up. Well, the thing is, so I'm like, they... I'm up to you because you're, you're claiming that you communicate. I've never communicated with aliens. They so I know everybody I look at is alien. Can the constituents that they have to listen to from the Bible Belt and from a different, different fear organizations in the United States would not accept any of that and would not vote them back into office if they said, oh, we're, we're promoting this kind of a reality, wouldn't, wouldn't fly. Um, they have to remain incredi incredibly third dimensional with these people. They have to remain incredibly, I'm just talking to you, and there's no hocus pocus. Because if there was hocus pocus, not, they would not be in office for more than 20 seconds. So that's why they do have that kind of relationship with some of those beings, but they cannot share that with the public. They cannot share that. They can, if they shared that with the public... Well, their lives would be safe. Yes. So uh, that's the answer to your question. They have to deal with third dimensional density people that are that many say, oh, there's no such thing as a flying saucer. There's there's no hell. There's no there's no nothing. You know, they're they're dealing, and then they're dealing with those people who believe in very strict Christian beliefs. And if they would say alien, oh my goodness, that they'd be like no vote for him and they'd have signs around the White House so um, but there's your answer I mean they do subscribe to that in their personal because they have to because there's no denying that it's there and they, so they have to deal with it in their personal lives but they do not have to deal with it with the public because that wouldn't work not at this time they have to deal with it in their public personal life though also, disclosure, when it comes out, after the first contact, uh, they will have to disclose a lot of things which they are hiding, like yeah. technologies, for example. Yes. They have a lot of technology so, that know, they're as hiding. As soon as you open that Pandora box, you have to like really follow it through. Mm -hmm. oh, that's true. That's true. Yeah. So, yeah, there's many things that are they, they would like to address, but of course it's too dangerous to, for their political their political careers. Even if individuals want, you know, collectively they have to make that decision. And uh, even yes. the aliens understand that it's not time yet. Right. Mm -hmm. they, and they say they know about us. Oh, yes. We've talked to them. We've talked to presidents for the last 150 years or whatever, you know. So they know. Every president has a file about that. And there's a man in uh, Rochester that has found uh, many of these files, so... Oh, Richard Dolan, yes. Yes. So... He was referred to by MUFON. Mm-hmm. MUFON, the Mutual UFO Network. Okay. Oh. He, he 
only supplies a lot of their files. Yes, because he was just doing his job and he ran into all these extraterrestrial files and it grabbed his attention and so he looked at everywhere he went, he could find extraterrestrial files. So it's interesting. Want to channel? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that would be good. Thanks. Thank you. But I think it was helpful to for you to say what you know because it's more condensed. Well, that was a long introduction. Uh, I like it. I like a lot of interested people, though. Yes. Yeah, that was a long introduction. I need you to correct one thing. You said 52 alien species. Where from do you get the number? Well, that's the the last number that the government posted. Government. Okay. You have to reference government. Yes, 52 alien species is the last number from. What's the name? M A A R. They posted that there was 52 species. However, if you look at that list of spe species, gypsies are on there. So <laughs> I'm not sure that's a real alien species, but they considered it an alien species because of some of their activities are alien. I guess so. this would be native to solar system, maybe. And they also, um, men in black are also considered a an alien species because they monitor, they are able to monitor alien activity without most people knowing it. So, they're very interesting. So, there was a few in there that I questioned as species, but they considered them a species. Why are they're not necessarily hostile. Um, they may appear to be hostile in some situations, but they just are diffusing something for for future that would cause the future to be harmed. So it may seem harmful, but it's actually protective. Does that make sense? Um, they have to be. They have to really um, know what they're doing. Have you ever had any information given to you of what's under? Oh, we didn't ask. No, we never asked that. No, we, never, okay. we never asked that. They did say that um, there's something under the pyramids and there's something under the Sphinx. And there is a way to get into the there is a, a way to get into the Sphinx by uh, some kind of button or or something. Some there's been several speculations where that is, but we don't know. But usually, when we ask those specifics, our friends. Don't give, no, don't they will not answer those questions because humanity has to find that for themselves. I love Carl. That's a great movie. It's a great movie. Great movie. Yeah. Yeah, mine too. You're one of your favorite movies too. Yes, yes, it is. Yes. That's my Bible. Yes. Aww. I thought you have seen it 15 times. Uh, it's a great, great movie. Yes. It, well done. It's well done. Did you happen to see uh, when they did the tour underneath the, the Colorado Airport there? I did. I caught that. I mean, oh, what's under there? Well, it's purported by a yes. lot of high level geothermal engineers. I mean, you're not you're just Mary Jo and John Key Public, oh, but no. exceptional human beings that have taken the wrong elevator. Uh, there was purported to be three years, if we, any of us remember. Yes. Why did they build that airport 72 miles out in the middle of nowhere? Uh -huh. And what they did is the federal taxpayers paid for approximately 13, 14 billion dollars worth of material. Wow. Then after three years, it was determined that it became contaminated and now none of it is utilized and then they move the airport a little to a different place. But what a lot of the uh, contractors, like from RAM and Raytheon, that yes. did the work, said, we have seen grays, we've seen talls, the whites. The blacks, yes. And that we have, well, as you can see, the hair standing up on my head. Yeah, of course. <laughs> They've seen them. One got very frightened because he wasn't brief, and he actually got shot four of the greys, and this was a man that was then quarantined and feared for his life. Wow. But uh, he came forward with a story and it was taken before he died of lung cancer. Wow. But, 
Unbelievable. That's cool. That's very cool. But it's supposed to be a colony where we're following the aliens. And it's like a city. We work. We get Well, there's several places where they have said that they have they have places that are low population that they go to, like the, uh, what is the Shetland Islands in north of uh, England and Ireland. They're very sparsely populated, perfect for, and they have a huge, supposedly a huge underground complex there in the Shetland Islands. So, I've never seen it. <laughs> so. What you're making me realize is they let you know what they want. Yes. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, allowing us to feel free within ourselves individually. Yes. For what we're dealing with, the filter and synthesize, like when I was driving here, I thought, what kind of people are going to be there? Is, it, is this going to be really weird? Is it going to be. You know, oh, I expected normal. maybe five. I expect maybe five <laughs> to ten people. <laughs> huh? I said, I can't wait for you to Okay. <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's. um. I asked all my favorite regulars to come if, if they want. To. I don't know who will come, but um, we'll see. But whoever is the most is essential for the group. So that'll be who comes. And maybe more than one. There might be more than one person that will be able to answer questions. But I have a feeling it'll be to her first because about the colonies. Because she knows the most about the colonies. Or somebody that knows about the colonies. So it will be okay when you get going that I can ask about the Denver airport. Ah. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, <laughs> the you see that they, they said that uh, that's where the higher up, the political people, are going to be, um, what, it's like a safety zone for them. Mm -hmm. That um, Like a bunker, you mean? Yeah, like a bunker, American yes. Because the one guy was saying it was like a, a guard there, he said, you mean that just nobody can go down here? And he said, no. He said, uh, you mean if I came down here? And he said, you would be turned away. You know, so they're authorized thinking. to shoot. Yes. Oh, and they're that's authorized. Serious. That's serious, yes. And that's why I wondered, the men yeah. in black have been purported to be around there. Oh, yes. And, and they're wondering, why, why, what are they hiding? Are they okay. Hiding? Because there's all this mystery. Well, we'll, you can ask. I don't know if they'll tell you. Yeah. Um, they won't give you specific because when uh, when the aliens are in negotiations with the Earth governments, they wouldn't expose information that uh, you know. Yes. But, and they, but are, they might give you a general idea. Yeah, they might give you a general thought of what what well, is going start, on. Uh, making the noise just to help you okay. focus. Okay, I'm going to go into a little meditation. Don't worry, I'll be back someday.
Муха. Муха. Уйга шуту. Greeting. It's a curve. Uh, we have Maps. lots of new people. You may introduce yourself. They don't know who you are. I am Takur. I am a female Lyran from the ship around your continent. Welcome. You're welcome. Are there any questions? I am here for your benefit. I am here to help you with whatever those things are that would keep you down in your daily life. We are now understanding how you are. And your spirituality is no different than ours, in the exception that it varies in thought pattern. It varies in intensities, where ours are very similar. There are questions. Yes. We as humans have a, simply a seven system, chakra system, or a nine chakra? There are many chakras in the human body. There's five main and two others, an angelic or a heavenly chakra and a hollow chakra at the bottom of the spine. There are other chakras in the middles of the hands, at the bottoms of the feet, behind the knees, many places for human beings to have chakras. But your main energy chakras are in your front of your body. And at the top of your spine, right at the base of the neck. Does that enter your question? Yes, it does. Many times when people are doing Reiki on your planet, they use the chakra in their hands. We are monitoring weather, seismic and volcanic. We also monitor the tilt of the axis. There is a problem there. It is 3%, 3 degrees, I should say, 3 degrees. Off its balance, we can maintain that it will not move any farther since we have caught it early. Is it it is volatile. That is one of the reasons we're here is for places such as California and Yellowstone National Park. There is also an active area in the Appalachians, but it's not quite as dangerous as that of Yellowstone and Yosemite. That area once was a huge volcanic area, much seismic activity there, and there was a threat recently of activation in two areas. The animals left the park. Some animals still have not returned to the park because they are more sensitive, and the seismic readings have been still on a yellow alert or a warning on planet Earth. There is still a warning, but they are allowing people in because it's still at yellow. If they sense anything greater, it will be evacuated again. It was, three portions of it were evacuated just recently. Please repeat. Will the cabal let go of the power it has controlling the earth and those in power? The cabal 
has much power still because the reason for that is because many put their faith in it. Many accept it and use it as a tool for control and manipulation. There are those that are controlled by the cabal and will not relent. Three, yes. Is that why it seems that time is moving so fast? Or does that have anything to do with it? There has been a change in your linear time pattern, but it's mon my minute. But the thing is about the tilt in the action axis, it does affect weather conditions, volcanic and earthquake conditions quite easily and plus the fact that recently you were exposed to energy from the center of the galaxy which is also having an effect on the earth was that the recent solar flare no this was different there was a recent solar flare but the energy from the center of the galaxy is quite strong and it has taken a two of your earth years to get here but it is now affecting some things on earth and therefore we must monitor very closely seismic some seismic activity cannot be controlled if it is too widespread but if it is isolated in certain areas we can do something about that Energy that came from the center of the galaxy have anything to do with Nibiru or Planet X? Not directly. The center of the galaxy energy has to do with your Mayan calendar, knowing that the future of that would start when that is the. I am sorry, I need to borrow some words. The 1221-12 was the beginning of your ascension and also the moment that the galaxy was pointed at Earth. And therefore, they, it had calendric, a calendar from the Mayans and other species of Earth cultures having their calendar end there because it was a beginning, not because of an end. Did I make sense? That's perfect sense. The Milky Way radiation source was in the equinox marginally to the whole galaxy. Correct. Which affects many things. But there was a direct hit of some energy to the Earth. Correct. This is part of our talking with the degree of change in Earth's axis. It has been off for a while, but when the energy hit, it changed the effect that it has on the planet's behavior. Yes. Yes. Did it affect all planets, all species, everywhere around? Or just, just what the, just explain the energy that is sent down because it's coming around again. Yes. Well, there is an effect. It affects everything in the universe, but not to a gr the same degree. The effects that will happen here are more with the weather, and with the emotions of people, with the water movement in the body, with the emotional contact to certain things in the air. But to contradict that, 
fourth dimensional energy was released at that time as well. And that fourth dimensional energy awakens something in your mind that is also connected with fourth dimensional energy because you have it since the beginning of time. You always have the next step with you even if you do not use it. Just like someone was trying to think with more than one part of their brain that cannot access it until it is time. But this fourth dimensional energy has touched the fourth dimensional energy within you. And therefore, this is part of your enlightenment process. Part of your telepathic process. It is small now and will become greater. But it needs to start slowly. <sighs> Any more questions? When some people transition, yes. do they stop on your ship sometimes first? Or is that a place for them to go before they, they move on? We do not. Uh, what is the word? Are you speaking of death? Yes. As your word. Yes. No. There is no need to transition with another species. You move from another dimension. From this dimension to that. There is a... We call it a fendroch. But it is for you a place where this dimension ends and the spirit dimension begins and you do not have to pass through alien space to get there. It is a natural movement and from there you are well, I don't want to say reassigned but <coughs> That is essentially what happens. But with much conversation and much love and much agreement. The conversation in the world, um, our world about um, climate change, essentially accurate, or uh, are, are people uh, are they... it, Ye, there is much truth in what they say about the earth being changed by gases and chemicals that mankind has produced. There are some natural effects, of course. As the earth ages, there will be natural effects. However, you have pushed them quickly to their necks. Step. The only problem is now, will there be an ice age, or will there be global warming, or will it be able to be controlled? We are waiting to see what humanity does, because it is essential for their next move, and they are aware of what they should do already. They are aware if they will do it. It will mean economic change. Continue. When, they say, when you say they, are you talking about leaders? Yes, the governments. They know that there needs to be a change. They do not want to because it would cause instability in financial governments everywhere. The stability is already shaken worldwide. They do not want to cause a collapse. However, that is inevitable in time. What is the solar bullplex that they keep talking about? 
solar bow plex. I do not know weather, that. Weather, oh. That weather pattern? Oh. Vortex. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Um, this is part of the galactic energy that they were talking about. I cannot go into specifics with that because it is being monitored and actually studied very thoroughly right now. And it moves, this vortex moves, and they realize that it's not an earthly kind of vortex. This is their cause for alarm. The Aurora Borealis has been around for mu much time. However, it is showing up in places where it should not. This is due to the way that the axis has been changed and light is refracting differently in different areas pulling it down more southerly than it has been in the past. I'm just curious about your being. Mm. Your telepathic abilities, are they restricted because you channel them? I can be somewhat telepathic, even now, but it is not appropriate. Mm. It is a protocol that we have among our people that it would just not be polite. What if you were permission? It would have to be agreed upon by those that I work with. And that is possible. That is possible, yes. Um, a while back, um, in the middle of the night, I was visited by an alien <laughs> telepathic telepathically yes. mm. and mm. I was so startled because they started talking to me but I was so startled and I just asked them not to talk to me and to, to go that away. That is right, yes. But I'm ready for them to, to talk to me again but I keep asking them. They will know when the time is right because you will still be startled and may turn them away again, unless you are completely at ease at that time. However, I do know who was speaking to you, and they had a message for you. It is not important right now that they repeat that message. You got part of it anyway, but it, in your subconscious, so that you were able to act out upon that as it was. So that is fine. There is no contact necessary for you at this time. So if they do have a necessity for further contact, you will be given that contact. Is there a specific role that uh, supposedly each human plays? Uh, and the reason why I ask that question is there are times that I would like to speak to uh, Someone of an alien, very conscious, but yet it does not happen. It is because the connection is not there yet. We are finding that there are certain people that can receive downloads of information, such as languages or things of that nature, that help us to find the channeling area because in humans, Humans can channel for a, a couple different areas. This gentleman over here channels from a different area than I am channeling with Jim. And there are a couple of you that are not a stranger to channeling, but it does not always come through the same port. But when those ports are desensitized in the sense that they are not overly, cannot be overly stimulated, then channeling can occur. Do you understand that? Right. Therefore, do not lose hope, but find something 
similar online as to what you're looking for so they can help you to discover it. Many times you may want in your system brain to want something, but it will not come because they cannot hear it or are not focused on you. But if you say it out loud, they can come and hear. Does this make sense? <laughs> Saying things out loud can help push things forward more quickly for you. Because many times there are so many that we cannot listen to everyone, but those that come to certain places to gather online or like this, then we can more readily see and hear what is happening with you individually if you wish this to happen. Do you understand? If you wish to happen as a group? If you wish to happen individually, they can see you in the group. Since you have spoken, they hear you. Go find things that would be similar to what you are looking for. And they will know then what you are looking for. They will, because they monitor those things of this nature. It is important that we stay in tune with those that are rising. Yeah. Um, a friend of mine was here in the fall yeah. when the channeling was yeah. going on, and Peter said that he wanted to go on a spaceship. He died last month. That's why I asked if he made Peter, up. I know who he is. Okay, he he was start. able to see the entrance of aliens into humans. He actually commented on it, that he actually saw it. And he is now very happy. Not that I know much about the spirit world, but we follow those that we know. Thank you. His time was come. He was at a place where he was about ready to move over to the other dimension anyway. Yes, that's what we talked about. He was, he was ascending, he wasn't dying. He had already seen fourth dimensional sites. Yes. Yes. We are, we are already doing things, but we cannot do it in a way that can be too obvious. But we do remove chemicals from the atmosphere. We do help unseed some of the clouds that they seeded that were causing some major problems. We didn't unseed, but neutralized some of the radiation that was given in too much force to the clouds in four sections of the world. We do try to keep humanity intact. <sighs> I must go now. My time is done here. Thank you. Namaste to you all.
Hello. Hey, where are you, Lakesh? Yes. Hey, Lakesh. I am Lakesh. Can you tell me a little more about yourself? I am. Oh, I love talking about myself. Uh, uh, I am a blue. I'm a short, round, sort of bulbous looking blue. Much like one of your gingerbread cookies. Round head, round, round. But I only have one thumb and four fingers, or three fingers. You have four fingers. I have three fingers. And the same one big toe and three little toes. And I do not have to walk if I do not want to. And I float and glide. It is my position. I have pra prestige. So I am allowed. And that is why I am allowed to be here. Because I have the prestige from my planet. They have given me their wishes that they would not mind if I go in this form to your planet. Of course, I could not come here physically. But I can come here in this way to speak to you and enjoy your company. Yes, I'm very happy today. My granddaughter is growing up and she's speaking well now, walking. I just had a granddaughter not too long ago. Yes, wonderful thing. So, is there any questions for me? Lakesh, the last time we were here, yes. we spoke about the possibility of a hologram and you said that would have to be passed through higher up, whether yes. it would ever be allowed? Not quite yet. That is not permitted. They said after first contact you will see us a lot. But before then, the holograms are not permitted because they are too... I don't know what the word they used, but it was, it was too something for them, the higher ups. But um, they were not permitted. You are hung up? I'm hung up. I want to know why it wasn't permitted. I'd love to see a hologram. Yes, that would provide much proof and, <laughs> and many things. Yes, I wouldn't mind that either. I, don't not, I do not quite understand as well. But one day there will be. So I just am waiting. I, uh, I am just happy to be able to be here. That's all. Well, actually, I'm fourth dimensional, yes. Okay, fourth dimension. Yes. And I guess you con are considered more spiritual? I don't know if it's more spiritual. It's a different density. A different density. Yes, and a different, it's a, di a different um, lifestyle in the sense that fourth dimension is less... Uh, it's like you are very... This chair, very hard. Our dimension, you can walk through things, if you so desire, at the right points. There are some places that you cannot walk through. But in most places that the desired densities are given and you know where you can walk through and um, not walk through. But we can uh, channel different kinds of music and sounds and things of that nature are quite different. Uh, because they are not, um, there is nothing that is discouraged in the creative process. So there is a much more availability of different kinds of sounds. And people are creating sounds all the time. And they are infinite. And it was just getting at the, um, essentially we're all spiritual beings. Oh, yes, yes. We are, um, I guess, equal in a sense, as, yes. as far as spiritual. Oh, yes, of course. And so in your dimension, you're searching also. Of um, course, to, okay. of course, we always search. There is, there is so much to learn. that You could never learn anything, all things about the universe, or all things even about yourself. You have many dimensions within yourself. Your, do you realize that behind your chakras is all your lives shadowed behind your chakras? Because you brought them with you. You have to bring part of them with you. Otherwise, there would be no past life regression. There's, they, 
they live in your chakras, and that different things live in different chakras, because different chakras have different meanings and different codes, and have different energies for the different parts of the body, and the thought process is as of those different parts of the body that go to the brain and come out to the body. So, your chakras are very important. Your energy field around your body, your meridians, keep them charged. The more they are charged, the healthier that you are. If there's blockages, get rid of them. If you know that you feel sort of then that means perhaps energy is needed. Find it. Find that energy. Find it in yourself. Perhaps you can touch yourself and bring in your own energies. When you say past life regression, yes. is that equating to uh, lives that exist all at once and they still existing? It's looked at that way in some societies of species. Now, you are a more linear species. I mean, your Earth is still round, which gives you the, the, the clue about everything existing at once. But you're not everywhere at once. But you can go anywhere you want to go. Correct? So, in some thought patterns, in some species, like the Chikani, everything exists at once, and they can go where they want at any time. Now, that does not exist here at this time. But if you get as advanced as the Chikani, perhaps you will understand that. But, right now, we are in linear time, Yes, and your past times may not have been in linear space or time, but they are recorded in you, behind each chakra. And you have access to them. And you have access to them, if you know how to get that access. Are future lives also recorded in the chakras? Ah, that cannot be, you cannot record the future unless it happens. So, but... Some have recorded the future, other species, but your species, no. You only have the past ones at this, in this human form. You only have the past ones. You do not have the future ones yet. I wanted to clarify, you define four dimension as the dimension where you can go through walls and hear some new source of music. Oh, there's much more to it than that, yes. Can you just give us a flavor what? of four dimension? What is most important in four dimension? Um, joy, telepathy. Um, telepathy brings us all together. Ah, you know one thing that is most important in our society is our celebrations. There's celebrations for everything. And the way we do our celebrations is important to us. Because when you are born, each part of the family bring you a piece of jewelry or a momentum that you can wear. A bracelet, a necklace, a crown, an ankle bracelet, whatever. Something to wear around your waist. And each one has a story. And when you become of the right age, the stories are told to you. All the stories on every piece of jewelry. And then when there's a celebration, like a... Someone graduates from a, a lesson they are being taught, or someone has a, an anniversary of their birthday, or there's a union that is needed to be celebrated for some reason. Then everybody puts their jewelry on, and they go and they mingle together. And I may come up to you and say, I am in love with that bracelet. And you know what you will do? You will tell me the story. Tell me your story of your bracelet. And all the history that goes behind it. Sometimes it can be very simple. Sometimes it can be very complex. But then you give that bracelet to me. And it is part of my jewelry now. And part of my history is your history. And we share our history 
forever with our jewelries and our costumes. That's the only time we get dressed anyway, is during a ceremony. We get dressed from head to toe in ceremonies. Most of the time I run around in what you might call a t-shirt. But for our celebrations, we fully dress head to toe, so that people can see our happiness for your, your promotion or your graduation or your whatever it is that it is that you are celebrating. And then we share our jewelry and share our history with each other. And this brings us close. It is a wonderful tradition. And as I mentioned last time I was here, we have no privacy issues, so that is not a problem with us. So I, I was unaware at the beginning of your privacy issues, but now I am totally aware, so. <laughs> so I will not make any more mistakes like I did last time. So yes, I, I embarrassed Jim last time by saying some uncomfortable things, so we will not do that. Well, I'll let you know ahead of time that uh, I have no privacy as well. It's oh, yes. You see, that is part of your... I think privacy is insecurity yes. at some point. Oh, I don't want to see my body. Oh, they can look at all my body all they want. I don't care. <laughs> I don't want to see because I need to lose weight. I need to lose weight too. I just, I just don't care because it doesn't matter. It does not matter to me because that is not who I am. I am not a big belly. That's not who I am. I am the cash. I am who is inside. And when I share myself, I share it completely. Yes. Why hold back? Let them know who you are. Why should you be shy and say, oh, I can't talk. I do not understand that. That is one thing I do not understand, is why you would seek not to be with everybody. To, you need your touch. You need your feel. You need your hug. You need touch from humanity. It is part of who you are, how you were born. Adam and Eve, born without clothes. At least that's the story, right? Uh, so, so where did you get all this stuff? But anyway. So all as I say is that it's not necessary for you to be so withdrawn within yourselves. Share yourselves. There are lovely things within every one of you that can be shared that you don't share because you're shy or because you, you think no one will understand. Well, you know, that is your culture because you are so individual. You don't understand each other. You try to understand each other, but ooh, whoa, that's a real chore. So, <laughs> so, so yes, that's the way you are. You were just, you, instead of making, instead of figuring it out and helping each other with that, you, you just go, oh, I can't right now. I'm too tired. I need something to eat. I, I have to go to the bathroom. I just, <laughs> I, I see that it's an excuse for not getting closer to people sometimes. Sometimes. Get close to each other. Met, mesh together, yes. I've heard you talking about that, yes. Meshing together. And it is all right. Don't hurt each other. If there are promises and bonds, you don't want to break those. But if there is love and freedom, be careful. Not to hurt each other, but love and freedom. What's wrong with that? What is wrong? I mean, it's not like it's not like you're going to run out in the street and throw yourself at everyone. Uh, but it's it is a private thing, and to share yourself with someone, as I have three mates, two female and one male. But I. It is not a problem. I'm allowed to have five, by the way. 
I haven't found the other two right ones. <laughs> but, uh, I tell you, you don't have to look. You just know. You will find that bond with your, with my telepathy, I will know when that bond is right. And there are millions of people I haven't met yet, so I'm not worried about it. I am happy with what I have. My joy is complete at this, with three, and I'm allowed to have five. So, so I'm not, not greedy. So, but yes, I would like to see humans sh share their, even their thoughts more, because uh, many times your thoughts can lead to a closer bond here. And perhaps more shaking hands, hugging, touching, being human, because that's what human is, right? We all have a little human in us. So, I mean, it is every species that can touch. Well, perhaps not reptilians. They scratch each other. So, I don't understand that, but that's what they do. So, I am like wound up tonight. <laughs> Love. I do not think there is a species that has unconditional love completely. There are spiritual beings that have unconditional love. But to get there, you have to be in spirit, I think. There is always something, some small little thing, but you work it out. It, it is part of the world, the universe. What keeps the universe together? <coughs> the dark matter. Ah, oh, surprised? Surprised? Why is it that the center of the galaxy spins at the same speed at the ed as the edge of the galaxy? Why is that exactly the same speed? Because it's held together with black matter. You will find that. In, and they already know that. But, uh, but it is. It's all connected in some way or another. So that it moves exactly at the same time. So, anyway, what was I saying? Unconditional love, how the physics and physiology of all living entities, yes. including cosmologists, which I'm seeing about 30 in your spinning right now. Uh, yes. Yours is spinning all over. Yes. Well, that's the way I am. <laughs> You don't, don't look at my spin because it's everywhere. <laughs> but that's who I am. That's who I am. You are a, a eternal likeness and beingness now in this frame of being. Yes, I'm very light. You're very light. Yes, I'm very light, and, but I am the only entity that comes fully into Jim. I come in as a holograph. I'm the only one that connects. My arms go to here. My legs go to here. But yet I can connect to the nervous system. And therefore that's why I want to experience many things on this planet that they won't allow me to experience. But um, I have experienced some things and it's wonderful. Uh, Max gave me a foot rub. It was quite wonderful. So. Things of that nature, and I experienced the beach just recently. Oh, they took me up to the beach. It was wonderful. It was wonderful. Magical place, very magical. I never touched sand before, and I held it. Uh, well, Jim had it in his hand, so I could feel it. And on the feet, because I float, I don't. And I float and glide, so I don't step on the ground. And besides, we don't have. I've not really seen sand on our planet. It's more like pebbles, pebbly, more pebbly. However, yes, to be able to experience your dimension is amazing. And I'll tell you why. Because of your density, you feel things much stronger. I feel things lighter. You feel things stronger. Your, your Sexual activity is stronger, your mental activity is stronger, in the sense that you can feel it, and your bodies are, you can, oh, oh, yes, but 
they are stronger feelings here. And that's why I want to experience it, you see. Because it is not quite the same on my world. You feel it much more strongly. Can I ask you a question? Do you feel less pain then on your world? In some ways, yes, we do. We still have the emotional pain. Same almost as yours, not quite. There are some emotions that are very small now, like hate is, a, is almost non-existent and greed because we have no currency and things like that. And we earn our, our lives through um, achievement and different things of that nature. So we don't worry about money and greed and stuff like you do. But I understand it now that I've been with you for a while and it's... Oh, it's something you've got to get rid of, really. <laughs> yes. One thing that uh, I went away with on our last visit. Yes. That on some of the planets that they have evolved to a certain, to such a point where there's no longer any competition. Yes, and that. I, I just, I thought about that a million times. I <laughs> wish that we could get to that point. You see. You wouldn't worry about. Um, well, you see, that's very similar to our world because we do not compete against each other. We compete for ourselves. And when we have children, we teach them, they, at, at a certain point, they're given many small aptitude tests to see where they are best suited, and we talk to them about their highest excitements, and then we let them take the courses that they want to take. And this way they move in a certain happy direction, yeah. whereas some places down here you cannot teach because they are not happy with how it is moving forward. You see, there we take the child and put them in a place where they want to be. They get to choose. And then we nurture them from that point. And if they want to change their mind, they are able to. If they want to continue, they are able. They can actually grow in two different directions at once. If they alternate their courses, is the right. It, it, but each time a class is graduated, we have a ceremony. The achievement is not competitive, but is uplifting. We uplift them in their achievement. And I am not jealous of them. No one is jealous of them. It was their achievement. They're going for where they want to go. I may not want to be that. Why would I be jealous of that if I don't want to be that? Now, this is the way we come together. And our ceremonies and celebrations are very happy. And that is when we exchange our jewelry, as I said, and change our history. And the person that is the celebrator, the one that is being celebrated, you get to choose if you, if you want to give them a piece of your jewelry and history as a congratulation. And therefore, you share more of your love and your history with them. Now, not all people will give at a celebration. I'll tell you why. Because there's the, the history that they are wearing is complete in their, in, their, in their mind. And therefore, it is for them to be earned to give it. So if you come and select that piece, then they will give it. But to just give it, they, some do not want to do that, especially if they are non-family members. Family members usually do. They family, family members usually just say, here, take it, and I'll tell you the history. So it's, you know how you are with your children, yes? We are the same with our children and our loved ones. We like to give. We love to give. We like to share the history behind this piece. This might be a piece from somebody 
a generation ago or five generations ago, but it is a part of the history that is still alive because of this piece of jewelry. Yes? You should do things like that. Because if you give a piece of jewelry along with the history of it, will it not mean more? Will it not take a greater spot in your thought patterns? Yes. Okay, where do I? I'm, I'm babbling. You know, I, I'm just curious something. And I was just wondering, and I don't know if that's how it works, but I, I, is there any reverse tunneling going on? Reverse? Yeah, are you in the, in the other being, in Jim's... Oh, you mean, if, is Jim up there telling them stories and things? Um, <laughs> I, I don't know, but, you know, I'm just curious. Is, I mean, because you have connection. The connection is one way, actually, I'm sorry to say. But it is, he is here, and the people that are around me, you see, I'm never alone when I come. My people come with me to watch and listen. Um, so I am really not alone. They're listening, or they're talking to Jim, but he's still down here. So he is not up there with them. But they come down and say, hey, what's up, you know? So. Say hi to them. Yes. Yes, so I'm learning your, some of things from your planet. They're amusing. Yes. <laughs> I was wondering if in this combination of dimensions between fourth and third, yes. if you brought a higher thermal dynamic with you because it seems to be a hundred degrees in here. Yes. The energy is very high. Yes, the energy is very high. You're right. I ha I do bring a higher temperature. And when people are sitting beside me, you can ask Max this. Very energy sensitive. Yes. Yes. And starting to see colors and auras. When I, and there's so much to the dimension that you're bringing. I'm thinking, well, anyone who sits beside me other than Max, Max is used to it now, but if someone sits beside me while I am channeling, they usually want to pass out, which is not a good thing, but they said there's so much heat coming off of you. Oh. So, but I do bring a thermal dimension, yes. I do bring a thermal dimension, yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, tremendous amount of vibration. Yes. Well, that's me. So, <laughs> but yes, I bring a lot of heat. The, anyone who sits beside me almost wants to fall asleep because they're like, it's, it's so hot in here. But I said, I, I'm sorry. Go sit over there. <laughs> so, oh, no, you don't want me to go sit over there. No. Oh, I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to who were the, the person that was sitting beside me. Oh. <laughs> you go sit over there so you can be comfortable. It's very hot. Yes, I bring a thermal dynamic. Yes, I do. Is your biochemistry similar to ours? Not really. Holographically, I can fit into the body and make it work. If I were in a true form, I could not possibly be in this body. Only holographically and only uh, sensuously. Yes. As the word would go, yes. At your home planet, or wherever you, where the real you is. Yes. You're projecting into Jim's body. Right? Correct. Yes. Is that by doing anything active, or is it what we call a meditative state? It's it's okay. Let me explain to you how this works. It's part meditative state because you do have to prepare for it to come here. Once you're here, it's, you're, you're here and you don't have to be in a meditative state. But to prepare for, there's equipment that has, a machinery that has organic material in from my body. It assimilates that material and uh, is able, it's from, it's from brain material that they clone into a machinery that can actually project me into the body. Correct. Sort of. <laughs> sort of. Are you carbon-based? Oh, no. No, what are you? No, carbon nasty. But anyway, <laughs> a carbon, it, uh, I'm not going to give you that information right now. 
because I don't want you to be grossed out. But uh, actually, there's a lot of sulfur. A lot of heat. Yes. Sulfur is very, mm -hmm, yeah. So, yes, you, uh, like in a match stick, sulfur. A lot of sulfur in my system, but that's not my base. So, but it does make it that the heat comes out, yes. So. So, can you see anything now in this room with us people in attendance here in a mildly self hypnotic state where we're, we're our center of attention in a way? What do you see in the energy fields around our work with us? Do you see anything? I, I see some things, but being as a holograph, I can't really pr uh, see the the third density as it is third density. I see it in my own way as a holographic image, which is to say that you're more like, um, you're, you're solid, but you're, I cannot see all your auras or anything. I, I can tell some things about some people though, like I can tell who has high vibrations and who is working on their vibe, who is, has physical problems, etc. Like that, I can actually. I think you have a lot of awaiting guests. Yes. <laughs> so, but I'm not going to go around because that would be embarrassing. Oh. But and it's. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, he. Well, he's he's happy because he's pretty healthy. So. <laughs> Well, okay. So. Are you moving the fans in the other dimension? No, I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. I mean, my hands go out to here, but I can control the fingers. See? But what does it's a magic. Is it floating, not moving? I'm in a stationary position with a headgear on. Uh, it's very small. It's not much headgear. It's very small, but it is attached to this machine, which I throw my consciousness into, and it projects. Xbox 360. Yeah. Ah, yeah. <laughs> 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 what do your friends do at the moment? Are they oh, which are watching? Are they floating also? Um, the ones with privilege have floating abilities. Those that do not want to float are standing, yes? So they are in the room near you? Um, yes, well they can, they can watch the uh, uh, visionary vision devices from different parts of the planet, yes? Yes, they're not in one space. Uh, they, are, uh, they are coming on what you might call monitors. They're not exactly monitors. These are globes of uh, plasma. They're actual plasma globes, so um, they can uh, put their face in that, yes? So it's a video conference, so they're... Oh yes, yes, yes. It's, it's much like your teleconferences, but much more advanced, yes. Did you say hello to them from us? They hear you. Hello. Hello. Oh, yes, yes. Um, and two of them plugged their ears. <laughs> It's much quieter there, yes. But anyway, that's all right. Uh, yeah. uh. Any more questions? Can I ask one? Oh, yeah. Um, it's maybe to do with the dimension. Sometimes if I'm reading about angels or if I'm doing a meditation with angels, I start hearing this beautiful music like I've never heard on earth. Yes. Am I going into another dimension when I hear that? And it seems so real to me and I'll even look at the dogs like, don't you okay. hear this? And this? What we have discovered about you, uh, about every species including our own is that when you are in an enlightened spiritual state music is all around you. Music is in the air. Music is not able to be destroyed, it continues. Even after it is stopped played, the vibration of the music moves on. And you are picking up on those vibrations of a higher realm. And so the music exists everywhere. You may not hear it, because you're, you're tuned not to hear it. But music never dies. As it moves out, it, moves, it stays in its, its 
vibration. So in many forms. So it may mutate slightly, but only for the better. Mm. It's lovely. Cool. Lovely. Because music is a spiritual thing. Music is of the spirit realm. It was created by spirit. So it never dies. It is a way of teaching lessons. It's a way of communication. It's a way of higher vibration or lower. But it is eternal. Music is eternal. Music is a universal. Yes. And it can exist in places when you least expect it. There are many people that when they have a, a, a spiritual uh, awakening, will hear music. Mm-hmm. Or there will be music playing when they have that spiritual awakening. Because it is resonating on a part of the brain that understands that language. Does that make sense? Yes. I see many high vibrations in here, actually. But I have to go. It was fun. Thank you. Thank you. It was fun. Thank you. We love you. I, I had much fun. I had much fun. Thank you very much. And uh, blessings to you all. Blessings. And, your, and to bring up your vibrations, I will, I will definitely... Um, well, they have already recorded this, and this will help your vibrations because in that, that recording, the, it also brings you to a certain level. You have to be at a certain level, or else you won't appear in the, in the picture. But, <laughs> but all of you, I think, will appear there. So, have a wonderful... Is it nighttime? Yes. yes. Have a wonderful evening. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hey. Yes, it's me. Wow. <laughs> Jim Wu. Uh, I don't know. Lakesh was fired up. That's right. You missed a good party. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. I will do the announcement. So, okay. Uh, you can see our videos on uh, humancolony.org. It's very Work on the front page, there is a link to. We have now two YouTube channels, and if you just on YouTube, you can search for Human Colony. But easiest way is abbreviation, Hucola. First, first letter, Human Colony, abbreviated to Hucola. It's a unique word which we use now, and on YouTube, it's very easy to find us. One channel is mostly Jim and I, uh, and a crowd of uh, people on the web speaking to each other, and another channel. <coughs> Uh, first is Hukola TV and second is Hukola Chat. Our crowd uh, of followers, they started channeling, started speaking galactic languages, and they just do their uh, webinars without us, so they have the, their own channel, and uh, it's an amazing it's, process. So It's been a really amazing because our, I think our Hukolo, H-U-C-O-L-O, is the only... Um, web channel that is actually birthing ch- channelers and birthing galactic languages. They even have galactic language, Jim. You go in there and speak your language and see if someone can understand what you're saying and sometimes they can and some sometimes it's just practice because it, they're getting these languages. So, and, they, and they're finding us by accident. Um, a lot of people said I said, well, how did you find us? Well, I was speaking this galactic language, and all of a sudden, I'm on Yukolo. And I had no idea that you guys did that. So he goes, I, was, I just felt like such a weird person because I thought I was the only one speaking this weird language. And here now we have a whole n- group of people speaking galactic languages and uh, starting to channel. They're, they're, they're all over the place down there yep. now. 
Uh, so, last three months it happened. Uh, initially, Jim spoke several languages. You heard Liran language. Wu Ha is high. So yeah. remember, Wu Ha is high. And, and Mahu is goodbye. Mahu. <laughs> Muwa. Or Muwa. Muwa is goodbye. Uh, so, um, just people call I me. Don't even say, I, I speak this. <laughs> I don't even remember. They, they say uh, that they speak this language for several years and they thought they go crazy and finally they find us. And we can, you know, we, we, some of our people speak the same language and they can converse. And there were amazing webinars on, on record where nine people speak galactic languages together. They converse in those languages and some of them can translate. Jim translates Arcturian with, without being, without channeling. I mean, through ch when he channels, he can speak many languages, but even without channeling, he can, can translate some. Which Are we being telepathic more than actually it's, speaking each other's language? Well, that's a good question because at a very early age, I was telepathic. Yeah. But then I was with a very religious, my parents were very religious, very Christian, and that was forbidden. And so I... I uh, pushed that out. I said, no, I rebuke all that psychic stuff. And, and, um, and it went away because I told it to. But it is starting to resurface now in some ways. I'm very intuitive when I'm doing Reiki. If I touch somebody's head, I, I can probably, it's like I'm, I know them. Um, in some cases, not in all cases, but I can tell them about their day, what they did last week, uh, and like with uh, Carrie, I, I didn't know who she was the first time I touched her. I told her, wow, you're prioritizing all day, and you're on your feet all day, you're very tired, you have a very stressful job. I, just from touching her head, and she goes, I'm a nurse. She goes, that's what I do all day long, exactly in that order. She goes, I prioritize. That's the first thing I do. And that was the first word I said to her. You prioritize all the time. And she goes, absolutely. That's what I do. Every who's Who needs me the most? So, so Jim offers private uh, channel sessions and Reiki sessions. Yes. And Reiki is, his Reiki is different. Takur taught him alien Reiki. I, I do some alien Reiki, yeah. Which, normal Reiki, you use palm chakra. And then... Liran Reiki use finger chakras, so you work with fingers. And that is the same with Octurian as well. Uh -huh. Octurian uses finger to nerve endings, and they move very quickly. The Octurians, yes. uh, with they d they have set patterns of nerve endings that they touch and let go immediately. It's like, but the motion of it and the 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 scheme of it is just really. Pretty cool, I think. I watched it on. And they sing one while they're doing that. And they sing, yes, while they're doing it. It's like it's like emotional well, I want to share something. Yes. Uh, and this lady can attest while you were channeling or you were in another dimension. Yes. You were kind of sucking the energy out of this room. Wow. Um, all I, I, I shouldn't speak for all. I, I was 110 degrees. Wow. But as soon as you return to your own persona. I feel the breeze, it's yes, cool, yes, yes. I have the most wicked front cortical temporal yeah, headache so that is now uh, gone. My totally arm, is just, yeah, it's just starting to get better. Oh, oh I... I What's yeah. physical body you my arm, it, well, Lakesh was in a very energetic mood. He was drawing energy, he definitely was. And he was putting out a lot of heat. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, if you want to pro want proof that Lakesh is alive, there you go. But, um, I would ask you who you uh, beforehand. I would ask you what days and times and whatever all you wanted to do it, and then I'd ask you who you wanted to talk to, and if you wanted to talk to more than one person, I'd find out if they were available, and I would let you know if they were available and. Then we would go on and you would ask questions and they would answer them. And uh, you could talk to, some people asked me to channel their spirit guides and I can do that too in some situations. If the spirit guide wants to talk to them, they will come through me. But if they don't want to talk to you, they won't. Some of them don't, but some yeah, of them will. It's easier to get a hold of location to occur. Yes, than the spirit guides because they're sort of elusive. They, they're... Um, 
but some of them come with real powerful messages for their 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 person like this is what i see and you need to do this and you know but in most cases they're not permitted to give you the future or the guidance there no no future questions will be answered because unless it's it's not import a real important future question they have answered future questions that are like Okay, yeah, I can tell you that because it doesn't have any bearing on your actual meaningful future, a change in life or something like that nature. They can tell you things like that. But if it has a bearing on who you will be in the future, they cannot tell you that. They can give you some advice about which way to go, but they do not control you. You have free will. And they, that is a protocol of the universe of the galactic thing, you do not tell people where to go or what to do. Huh? Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, Gene Roddenberry, I have to say, had uh, he had had to have visited aliens. He had to. He had to have visited aliens. He is too close on too many things. Too close on too many things. I mean... What you're saying. <laughs> to Kerr sounds like a Klingon. Does it? Yeah, it's like and the language, like even the understand. language is similar. I uh -huh. love the old Star Trek. <laughs> but the language of the Lyran is similar to Klingon in some ways. I mean, it has the same kind of guttural sounds, but it's a different language, of course, But because theirs is even more choppier and gut more guttural than that. But it, yes, he. That's the first thing he said when he heard Decur. He said, "Oh, Worf." <laughs> he said, "She sounds like Worf." But she didn't like it. <laughs> no, she didn't like that. She was like, "I am a woman," you know. <laughs> yeah. So it's like. It's so close. It really is. It's very close, though. I have a question too. When you talk about your fingers, a couple years ago when I was meditating. It's like when I do Reiki on people, sometimes I just use my fingertips. Yes. And I'm just told where to go in certain parts of their body. Yes. And I can, and I feel it right now, this energy coming mm -hmm. through. I mean, I wasn't taught that. It was just, I'm told, usually I'm a controlling person, but when I do Reiki or IET, it's yeah. like I just listen and I just do whatever I'm told. And that's, ex that's how I started channeling, actually, is to occur started telling me where to put my hands on Max's body to Reiki him better. So that was the very first, it was in my head though, I didn't say it out loud. I wasn't going, put it there, put it there. Wait, you know, I was going, I was just going, oh, okay, oh, and he's going, what's going on? Because I'm going, okay, all right. Excuse me. Yeah. Uh, we're going to miss a window of uh, an appointment for a gathering that we have. Later. Okay. So we need to. Uh, oh, no problem. That's fine. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming. I appreciate it. Much love. I'm having. I have to redo my cards because the old ones are no longer viable. Old contacts. You can uh, find Jim's contacts on humancalling.org. I have all my phone numbers and everything there. So. So yeah. So. Jim's name is on the left. Yes. Yeah, my telephone number, email, everything. I'm out there. I'm out there. I'm not afraid to be who I am or people can say whatever they want. I just know what it what is. So we will have okay. a similar session to tonight, a month from now. I don't have the date. Remember the date? Yes. Friday. It's a Friday. Friday. <laughs> yeah, second week, second Friday of the month, I think. So thanks for coming. I love love meeting you. Have a great day. You hope to see you again. Yes, you will. Okay, great. All right, very good. It's great. Oh, let me stand up for a minute. Yes. Jim is not very really so very well set up for recording, so if you want to record a chat session, you can record on the cell phone easily. Yes, you can do it. Okay. I have camera over there. It's not working yet. I have to pay $35 on my Oh, I can buy it.
Oh yeah. I really energized with you. Like I like you said, sucked a lot of energy. I can feel the rest of the word when I use that energy for it. What is my take on the I think I'm so well. That's okay. But, you know, it's a feel that we're different. And my books are available. I am. It's a choice. I think it's actually the end of the end of whatever it was. Channel Culture. Do you want to say more about your books? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. My first book is. Who are you? Before I met Jim uh, about the hybridization program and the spiritual world. And the second book is uh, The Plans for Contact and Selling New Energy. I could tell. Those are excellent books, so mm -hmm. Wonderful to see you. It's all right. Yes. No, I didn't. I wanted to mm -hmm. just like the ship. Do you know what? Right, that's right. I think it could have been either one or there. Somebody? Um, sent me a donation big enough to, for a whole month of finances. No. Yes. And that caught me up. And since then, I have not been anything but on time and beautiful. It's good. Oh, wonderful. That's wonderful. One thing that I have to tell you, you were talking about the donation. Oh, he is. And you can remember this? You can always watch until you have a thing for someone. Oh, of course. Knowing that you will never get anything back. Oh, I know, for sure. I do a lot of free Reiki. Oh, good. I do a lot of free Reiki because it's just my way of giving back to the universe. And I just love Reiki because I need Yeah, you need to say Heiki and Reiki. But you know what? I can feel Earth. I feel your energy. Yeah, you. There's some things that you yes. have worked on. Your shoulders, your stomachs. Um, do you have a knee? Yes. Okay. I'm feeling those things. I mean, I'm becoming way into it. I'm becoming a little bit alien. Okay, I gotta tell you. So while we're on. Oh yeah. Yes, I can believe that. Well, I had a similar experience. I'll tell you about. And so I'm like, you can't talk to me. I'm not with my girls' group. Only in the girls' group are you allowed to talk. Talk to me. Really? It's they don't set those little things. It's three o'clock in the morning. I'm just coming from the bathroom. Yeah. So tonight I asked, uh -huh. you know, yeah. that's why she asked you that. Oh, I, I wanted to ask if they would be able to know that she was okay now. Oh, yeah. They know they're okay, yeah. They hear everything that everybody says, so it's very cool. So they said yes, that it was the woman, and she said yes. Uh -huh. You did, you know, yes, they did come and talk to you. We know who it was that came and talked to you, and uh, you did get the message subconsciously. Oh, okay. Oh, there we go. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. And so I told oh, good you, know, I am, you know, I'm okay to have them come again because they've been asking them, I'm all right, all right now yes. to come and talk to me again. And she just said, you know, we are not ready yet, so when they're ready, they'll come and talk to you again. Oh, yeah. 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 Great, great, great. Well, the reason I asked you about the unconditional mm -hmm. is because it is very, very difficult. Okay. Oh, yes. But I want to know what I asked. Oh, so am I. Yes. And so is it. 
Every, yeah. Unconditional yes. love. Yes. I am working on that too. And you know what? I just, I, know I, I feel so much joy anymore. I know you do. I, I, I just, oh, that's what you do. Yeah, I'm very joyful right now. Oh, so I'm, oh, so, yeah. And it seems like just to, they're coming to me in a much more, wow, powerful way. To I was sitting on the, on the vortex and going, shh. You know, yeah. and um, yeah. when Lakesh came in, that was the strongest right. I ever felt it. How can uh, we meet up? How can we meet up? So, oh, sure. Yeah. Yes, he has all the information. Yeah. Plus, I'm on uh, my all my information is on Human Colony, Colony org. My phone number, my address. I understand your mom's doing My Skype address, everything. Well, why could he come to one of our groups? Oh, I could. Just tell me when it is. Oh, yeah. uh, we meet every other Friday. Yeah. Every other? Yeah, we meet every other Friday. Oh, wow. Oh, how wonderful. Yes. I'm going I'm to get some more water. Yeah, I, and I can break you. Yeah. I can throw you a break. I, I just touch her and energy flies in, you know what I mean? Yes. Um, your energetic channel needs unblocked too, down around your knees. Be well with her. You know what? I'm already unblocking. So. Nice to meet you. Yep. Yeah, to meet you too. Yeah, you'll be well. Yeah, take care of yourself. Oh, hey, wonderful. That's cool. All right, that's so awesome. Yes, Kenny. What, what time do you have? Um, oh, Saturday morning at 10 a.m. we have a well, webinar. Well, teach college. Oh, and I, oh, yeah, it's online. Oh, you go to Google, oh, hang out. Oh, and, oh, and, oh, yeah, and you'll actually if you go to S Max how to get on the web. Because he'll know how to do Well, he gave the human yeah. calling yeah. org. Yeah. But. And I've known Bill and, and uh, oh, so awesome. oh, yeah, sure. Um, get in touch with me. We can do whatever you want. So. Well, you know, actually, I was thinking you might be related to her. I, things are getting really crazy. Yeah. Good, yeah. Okay. In a good way. Crazy good. Yes. <laughs> yes. They're getting crazy good. Now, tonight I expect there to be maybe five or ten more questions. Yeah, because we canceled the first two. Oh. There was two before this we canceled. And then this one, it seems everybody got the note message for this one. So, wow. Two Fridays out of a month. Wow, sounds good. So, when you're walking, I would like it up. Yes, and I can. Okay. Oh. I know. Oh, good. She's the only one that we still can't. We, we make I her gave that up 22 years ago. Okay, we, we make her energy. <laughs> she needs energy. I sure do. Yes. There she is. This is my daughter. Hi. Hi, daughter, Jeff Baglin. Diane. Diane Giles. Nice Hi, to meet you. Hi, Diane. Nice Max. to meet you. Your um, mom says you have a message. Good. Thank Could you. Give, thank you. Like oh, some uh, I information written down. Yes. Please and thank you. This all belongs to it, too. I know so, this name. Jimmy Wayne and the Nipsa. Okay. Oh, he's prepared. I've known you longer. Yes. 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 <laughs> because I sense She doesn't necessarily want to say that, but... So Saturday yes. morning we have the <laughs> web, three webinars together. with Jim's channel. Yes. So yes. come to his but house and uh, join us. Yes. It's like oh, yes, you can come to my house yes. if you want to be at the oh. webinar. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Saturday morning, 10 o'clock. Tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock. <laughs> AM. So I'll just. I so far every please. Sunday for <laughs> almost half a year we do it. I have the. I have the um, <laughs> Reiki table in the middle of the floor I, I, still, I, 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 so I have to get that down tonight. I remember tonight. what Jim Hume said about you, so right. I'm not going there's there. There's this one and this one, mm -hmm. and that one hey. back there. Hey. Uh huh. This hey. one and this one here, and we have hey. one more. Then you jump back on next to me. We have one in our group. Uh huh. Jim, hey Jim, I've met you and Max before, and I'm trying to figure out where. Maybe at the um, and then at the um, the Reiki share? No, it was heart the heart center maybe. Or, wait, 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 wait. What was it? Could be Reiki share. Reiki share could be. Yeah, I actually yeah, had you on my table as I remember. Oh, okay. I did a treatment on you as I remember because it took me a little bit to. Uh, wait, what do I know this guy? And then I realized. It, um, Lay down. You look at that. Oh yes, 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 yes. You came with Gary one day. Yes, yes, yes. 
Uh, many years ago. Oh, yes. I'm go, I'm about 10 years ago. Well, not quite that far, because I've only been doing Reiki for like two and a half years. So. Yes, my dear. I've only been associated with Reiki two and a half years. It was about two and a half years. No, because I haven't. Go no, to the perspective no, I haven't been there in five years. But oh, wow. you weren't okay. doing Reiki. I mean, oh, oh, okay. No, no oh, but okay. I just was. I came to Reiki for the first time in January, about two or three oh, years ago. See, I've never been to the new one. I've ah. only been to the old one at okay. Lickety Stitch. See, I never was there. Okay. Okay. Come to the new one, it's great. But we met somewhere. I know I met you somewhere. Yeah, I feel that. I yeah, feel that. I had a connection. We're all connected. Yeah, we're all connected, yeah. for sure. Yeah. But I do feel a connection with you, so... Uh, yep. we, we are all connected. Yes, we are. Were you ordained by Dan Chesbro? No, no, I'm thinking maybe that, but I'm not. But then I actually feel the same about you, too, man. So. I was in Barbara's Carlton. Okay. Barbara Carlton. I've never met her, but I know of her name through Elizabeth. I also go, went to year four meetup of cookies. You guys ready to go? Set up, you know, All right, we've got to watch her. Yeah. Jeff, well, Jeff, do you have a card for her? So she can I don't. You know me, I'm always up here. Now, you're going to Florida. Why not? Oh, Why I'm not? going two weeks from tomorrow, and I won't be back till the third week in August. Oh, wow. So, uh, nice vacation. Yes. Yeah. So, week. So I will be in touch with you. Yes. Okay, good. Excellent. And I'll be with her. Okay, great. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, the Friday, the fourth week in August, open. Okay. We'll all kind of meet here. Okay. Oh, that's okay with well, Isabel. Yeah. No. We already planned it. Oh. Oh. Isabel oh. said yes. Sorry, Bill, wherever <laughs> you are. Oh yes, I'd like to have your number. Right here. Okay. <laughs> oh, he'll he'll give it to we'll, me. We'll, if, we'll, you, we'll, if you if you put it on there, we'll both have it. All right. Actually, I'm on better. Bill's distribution list. Oh, okay. And this one. Yeah. What's it, what, what? Yeah, but I'll I'll Please? give it to you. Fourth week in August. Okay. What is Friday? Bring my energy back down to the third dimension. Yeah, there was a lot of people floating up there. It was like I th some people were rising out of their seats, I thought. What's your name? Jeff. Jeff Bagram. Excellent. Thank you. I love the idea of what you were talking about with the idea of our work. When are you going? I'm not going until the 20th. What is this called, Max? Tank drum. It's made of yes tanks. That's why it's called tank drum. Tank drum. I would like to have one. My name is God's Grace. Um, oh, wonderful. Can I remember yeah. the link? Wonderful. I kind of aspire to that. Yeah. So, see, that re that's a reminder of how special. Join us in, my, in every possible way. Maybe you'll start speaking galactic languages and channel it. Okay, Max. I wouldn't doubt that. If you have a channel already. Basically, I'm very uh, clairvoyant in a medical intuitive. Okay. Um, well, uh, I've tried channeling, but I, I haven't been able to push aside yet. I haven't okay. been able to Let them come aside. in, yeah. I've been able to let it's them come support. in, but I haven't been able to step aside. People right. who join our community, they kind of apply electronically. We have email where people send email and say, I mean, that's kind of like a stamp that you apply. Yeah. And then first they get the logic languages, yeah. they start speaking. Maybe Brash. Clear and and, and, uh, and, like and then it helps them to start channeling right. because they kind of when you speak the language you already see the path. Yeah. 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 She's already out. Oh, okay. we we got to wow. go then. Yeah. Wow. Nice wow. See you. Wonderful yeah. seeing you. Yeah. Give me a hug. Yes. <laughs> okay. Wonderful Enjoy seeing you again. Thank you. Thanks. God bless. Wonderful you? seeing you. Nice to see you again too. God bless, mm. Yeah. Thank you. Wonderful. <laughs> see you.